Um, so I went to beauty school before my whole life changed. I was in beauty school, I went to Paul Mitchell, I graduated, I'm a licensed hairdresser, I keep up with that because I'm in debt because of it, so I might as well pay the $50 a year to keep it up. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't even like started paying on that debt. Sometimes I'm like, wow, I make so much money now, I'm so stable. And I'm like, wait, my loan's still deferred. <laughs> yeah, real life. Um, so a cool story, when I was in beauty school, the reason I went to beauty school was because I wanted to work as a therapist. And I was like, that's too much money. <laughs> and so what's another way to do therapy and be artistic? I was like, go to beauty school and there's no boundaries. <laughs> so you just do their hair and talk about life and then send them all the way and charge them money for it. It's therapy, right? Um, <laughs> like, I'm, okay, you're doing great, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I went to beauty school. My teachers knew that I loved helping people. And there was a woman that had came in, she had been beaten by her boyfriend, Paul Mitchell, the school San Diego is downtown. And uh, my school's, my teacher called me out of class and was like, we want you to work with this woman. And I was like, okay, sounds good. I show up, a guy had shaved off a lot of her hair. Um, she had, both of her eyes were black. Um, she had some blood on her head, like it was, it was pretty intense. And my teacher was like, Autumn can do this. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And I, was, I felt really honored, actually. Um, and so I showed up, I went down to the, to the front desk in the salon, and I had one of my friends start on her hair. And I ran to the store. I don't know, I think I like accidentally found some child support money or something like that for my birth father, and I was like living it up and had like thousands of dollars. Or maybe it was like give up, maybe it was give back money from FAFSA. I don't remember, but I was living it up. <laughs> I was like, I got like $2,000, I'm about to buy the world. <laughs> yeah. I was like 21, I thought that was a lot of money. Um, and so I went to the store and I got her like a whole new outfit, new backpack, new shoes, and a dozen roses. So I went back to the school, I did her makeup, covered up the bruises, and um, I showed her all the things that I got her. I was like, here's like roses. She was like, honey, I'm homeless. I'm like, what am I gonna do with a dozen roses? I was like, I don't know, sell them, <laughs> like make some money. Um, got her some new clothes, some new shoes, like a little Betsy Johnson bag, and it was it was super awesome. I have pictures from that day. Now I'm like, why did we take pictures? That's so degrading. Like you know, you get a, you wake up a little bit after a few years. <laughs> um, so and then I'm gonna fast forward to 2016 when I was in the hospital. So like I said, I was like the little social butterfly. For my first time in the hospital, social butterfly, I was friends with everyone. I literally was like, I'm gonna write a book. And during like lunch times, I would people would be like, Let me hear the story about me when I wanted to jump off the bridge. And I just like read it to them. <laughs> and like 162 stitches, five staples, like all the weird like stories about people's lives that I had that were not weird actually. I don't know why I said that because it's real life. And so many of them had such wild stories. And so I was friends with everyone. Like I said, I want to write a book one day, but I don't think that's ethical because it's everyone else's stories, not my own. Maybe I'll talk about my own stories. I don't know, I've changed their names. I did, when I wrote, I changed all their names. One's like Sergeant, one's like Boston, because he had an accent. I'm like, Boston did this. Um, but there was one woman that would not come out of her room. She would not talk to me. And I was so bothered by this. I was like, I'm in a psych hospital. She needs to be my friend. Like, doesn't she know I need help? Like, we're both in this together, honey. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm like, why isn't this lady talking to me? I'm so confused. And I would hear that she had been there for months, actually. She was on conservatorship, which is like, I work in a psych hospital now with people in conservatorship. And um, so I heard that she had been there for months. And I was like, but I want to be her friend. I don't care if she's scratchy. Like, I'd play the piano. I'd be playing lean on me. Like, I really thought I was in a movie. Like, everybody, all together now. and how are you to break out, guys? Like, there's no way to break out of there. I didn't know what I was doing, but I thought I did. Um, and so, one day this girl came out, and she sat with this mom, and I was like, cool, I'm gonna go sit with that mom, too. Like, I have group of friends. Like, I'm about to meet this woman. And so I go and sit down with this mom, and the mom looks at me, and it's like, oh, honey, I like your hair. Like, it was, like, super short and blonde. And I was like, yeah, I work at Paul Mitchell. Like, I went to Paul Mitchell School, and this grouchy chill lady, looks over and she's like, oh, I went to Paul Mitchell once. This girl brought me, bought me new clothes and a dozen roses. And, um, and I looked at her and I was like, Greta. And she was like, Autumn. And she cried and we cried. And it turns out she was the same woman, obviously, that I had met at my school and helped 
uh, about a year prior to that, she's like, why are you in here? <laughs> like, what are you doing here? And I was like, well, life gets hard, you know? Um, so anyways, I thought that was a cool story. Because you never know, like, like you never know who you're gonna help. You never know who you're gonna run into in this life. And like, you guys saw that picture I passed around, like literally that was done with a piece of paper dipped in some ink. And like, she's sitting among you guys and y'all don't know, like, y'all never know. <laughs> so I'm just so blown away by that fact and the fact that I ran back into her. Um, it's proud of cool. <laughs> Okay, cool. So next up we have Kelsey. Woo, woo. Bring Kelsey up to the mic. 